What's up everybody, my name is Kason and welcome back to another Pokemon Draft League video. Only today is not the PUDL which you are used to. I am actually joining a second Pokemon League and this is essentially starting at perfect timing because we are essentially in the playoffs in my other league and wrapping things up and uh, it's time to start another adventure here. And in this time, this is going to be the first ever time I've actually drafted my own Pokemon roster. Last time I joined in the middle of the season and this time we are going to have full control over the roster from the very beginning. So I'm really, really excited. I'm going to be your coach of the Oregon Golducks again, but this time in the IBL, the International Battle League. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. So I hope you guys can grab a drink, maybe some popcorn, enjoy this draft analysis video. And a huge shout out to Nuglo in the Discord for putting together these draft slides. Honestly, I think they are beautiful. I did not make these. So if you guys like them, let me know down in the comments below and uh, just give a thanks to Nuglo. So without further ado, guys, Let's jump into the draft analysis breakdown. And one thing I wanted to say is that there are 12 people in this league. It is for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi, um, just very similarly to the other league that I am in. And we had the fifth overall pick. And now in this league, there are actually some more Pokemon that are available that are not in the PUDL. Uh, it is a little uh, stronger overall in terms of the power curve. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but with the fifth overall pick, I had pretty much resigned myself to the fact that I wasn't going to get somebody like Palafin, Dragapult, Chien Pao, uh, or any of those because they are really the top tier Mons. However, I was mistaken. Uh, with the fifth overall pick, I managed to pick up Dragapult, which honestly, even at 20 points, which is the highest tier there is, I was ecstatic about this. Uh, you get 120 points overall on this roster. Dragapult is ridiculous. With 142 base speed, he pretty much outspeeds everything that you're going to see other than Deoxys speed and like Electrode uh, and Regieleki. That's pretty much it. He's faster than basically everything else. Really good uh, attack stats, both special and physical. He gets access to status moves like Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp. He can use U-Turn for priority to pivot out into something else. He can use screens like Reflect and Light Screen. This guy is honestly just incredibly versatile. There's a reason that a lot of people consider him to be the best draft league Pokemon out there. And uh, I am extremely excited to get my hands on this guy. For this season, this guy is going to be named Jesus LBL. I know that Jesus likes Dragapult, so hopefully he gets excited, but this was our first overall pick. I am just so incredibly thrilled to start the draft off this way. Um, this was really easy because I haven't done a draft before, and the fact that Dragapult was sitting at pick number five, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Second overall pick, though, I wanted to pair it up with something else that would resist Dark-type damage uh, that can hit my Dragapult super effectively. Also wanted to resist Ice-type damage that can hit my Dragapult super effectively. So we went ahead and grabbed Quackleball. And honestly, out of all the new Pokemon in the new generation uh, for Scarlet and Violet, Quackleball is actually probably my favorite Pokemon of all the new Pokemon. Um, in the general playthrough, I honestly thought he was ridiculously broken, and that was without his hidden ability, which is Moxie, uh, which if you guys don't know, once you kill a Pokemon on the other side, with Moxie, you get a plus one boost to your attack. This guy's staple move is called Aqua Step. It gives you a plus one speed boost when using it, and you can figure out from there, you, this guy can get out of hand very, very quickly. It gets access to Sword Stance. It gets access to Flip Turn to get himself out of there close combat, a bunch of really, really strong attacking moves. This guy even gets rapid spin to clear hazards like Stealth Rock or Toxic Spikes. I honestly am just so thrilled to have this guy on my team. He gets priority in Aqua Jet, uh, just an overall fantastic Pokemon. So I originally almost went with Ur Urshifu Rapid Strike in this slot, who is another water and fighting type. However, Quackleval was less points and Quackleval is just my guy. I didn't really want to use Urshifu. I love Quackleval. And honestly, in this draft, I was like, I'm going to draft at least a couple of Pokemon that I just genuinely love. And uh, I think I accomplished that with this second pick. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but every single Pokemon in this video is going to be named after our, one of our YouTube members. Uh, we have 22 overall YouTube members. We're going to have 11 Pokemon on the team. So unfortunately, between the PUDL and this, we're probably going to have to be one person left out, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't plan for this to be my final ever Pokemon Draft League season. So whoever does get left out, I will make sure to name a Pokemon after them. 
But that being said, Quackleball this season is going to be named after Kaiyuma. For the third overall pick, I knew that I wanted a Steel type as it is just really, really good coverage for our main pick, Dragapult. Uh, it resists fairy damage, which hits it super effectively. I wanted a grounded Pokemon so that I can resist electric damage that is going to hit our Quackleball super effectively. And honestly, I wanted a Pokemon early in the draft that I want to click Rapid Spin on. Rapid Spin is a move that gets rid of Stealth Rock, gets rid of Sticky Web, Spikes, all of those pesky hazards that the enemy team wants to set up. The thing about that skill is there's some Pokemon that you don't necessarily want to click Rapid Spin on. Iron Treads is a Pokemon that I actually do want to click that move. This thing is a fast Pokemon. It can get a really solid attack stat. If I'm clicking that move, not only am I getting rid of hazards, but I'm also speeding it up which is really, really important. This thing gets the access to the ability Quark Drive, which means I can run booster energy on it and basically outspeed most things that don't also have the Quark Drive or Protosynthesis ability. It gets access to Stealth Rocks. It gets Ice Spinner to clear terrains on the other side. And it also, crazily enough, gets access to Volt Switch. So for our three Pokemon that we are starting this draft out with, all three of them get access to some sort of move that can take them out of the battle and switch them into something else. So overall, I think Iron Treads is just a really, really great Pokemon. Earthquake spam is really good in singles. Uh, I'm incredibly excited to use this thing. And this guy is going to be named Machin X, AKA Machine X, uh, if you guys know what that is from. But overall, Machin, awesome guy, awesome member. I'm excited to use him this season. For our next Pokemon, I wanted something that was a little bulkier, something that could switch in and out, something that could resist the ghost type damage for our Dragapult, and also another ice resistance as it does hit our Dragapult super effectively. I saw a Pokemon sitting there and I knew it was absolutely perfect for our roster. So I went with none other than Mr. Aloha, the Incineroar, which I am really, really excited about. If you guys don't know, Incineroar in VGC or doubles is one of the greatest Pokemon out there. The ability Intimidate is incredibly strong in doubles. However, in singles, it's still really solid. Um, if you are able to switch in and lower an attack stat for the opposing Pokemon just by simply appearing, that can be fantastic. So we've got, we're gonna say Aloha, hello, and Aloha, goodbye with Intimidate and Parting Shot being able to lower the stats of the opposing Pokemon very, very effectively. We can U-turn out if we need to, and we can also hit something really, really damn hard. Even though this thing is known as being bulky support switch style Pokemon, it can also hit really, really hard with Flare Blitz and as well as Knock Off too. So honestly, this thing is just really, really strong. It also adds to the kind of theme of the team at this moment is that we've just got tons of pivot. Uh, that is one thing that I really wanted to try and focus on on the roster for the IBL this season was I wanted a ton of Pokemon who were able to switch out with moves, allowing me a lot of basically freedom and more so opportunities to try and create a positive advantage. So that was my overall thinking here. Um, and for eight points overall, Incineroar feels like an absolute steal to me. So I knew that I wanted to go and get him. And for our next Pokemon, I wasn't sure if I was going to make him a Terra Captain or not. At the moment, they are not a Terra Captain. But one thing I wanted was something that could set up Sticky Web, some sort of speed control. So ultimately decided to go with Vikavolt or Vikavolt, the bug electric type who happens to have Levitate, which means he has a ground immunity, which honestly at this point is really strong because I don't have any ground resistance. I have two ground weaknesses. Well, Vikavolt completely ignores that ground type, which is really great. It gets access to Volt Switch, so another pivot option. It's a bit slower, which is really good because sometimes with uh, certain Pokemon, you want to be able to switch out really slowly rather than before the opposing Pokemon. Uh, this thing has a ridiculous special attack stat at like 145, so it can just absolutely nuke the shit out of somebody if it's allowed to. So if you think that I'm just gonna go for sticky webs and you think that you can safely set up in front of it, uh, not so fast, 145 special attack is ridiculous. It can hit really, really damn hard. Uh, being able to set up sticky webs though is something that I wanted to put a priority on with this Mon because it helps certain Pokemon like our Quackwivel or in Incineroar who are kind of middling speed tiers. If I can slow down the enemy, I don't necessarily have to speed myself up with some of the other mods. So with the Vikavolt, this is going to be McCrane this season. This thing's got a big old brain. That's why it's got that big special attack stat and McCrane's got a big old brain. So I'm really, really excited about this one. 
And let's jump into the next mon. For our next Pokemon, we are choosing our very first Terra Captain, the Iron Thorns, aka Greatestness. And this thing is a futuristic version of Tyranitar. Its stats are actually slightly worse than Tyranitar because Tyranitar is just absolutely crazy. But it's got that rock electric typing, which is just really, really strong offensively. And the problem with this Mon, um, its stats are ridiculously good. It's bulky, it's got an okay speed stat, a really, really high attack stat. The problem with it is its rock electric typing has a lot of weaknesses and a four times weakness to ground. That is the issue, and that's why a lot of Pokemon don't use, or a lot of people don't use this Pokemon. However, we get to use it as a Terra Captain. So very similarly to the BODL where I used Glastrier as a Terra Captain, and I said the ice type wasn't good, and you can just switch it. Here is the exact same thing. I can switch my typing and make it really good. I can get rid of my weaknesses that Rock normally gives me and just become a mono electric type, pump up that damage even higher. Um, I, otherwise, I can switch into Fairy or Grass Terra as well to try and resist different types of damage. So uh, the Fairy is there to try and resist any sort of like fighting damage that would come my way. Grass is there to resist that ground type. So it turns my four times weakness into a resistance. I'm incredibly excited to use this thing. This gets Stealth Rocks, which means I can set up hazards on the enemy team. It also gets access to the move Dragon Dance, which gives a plus one speed and attack boost in the same turn. It gets multiple really good attacking options like Supercell Slam, which is an incredibly hard hitting electric type move. Um, honestly, I'm just incredibly excited for this thing. I think I'm really pumped about this because Iron Thorns is a Pokemon that just doesn't get a lot of play, um, never sees any play in doubles, and even in singles it doesn't see that much because of its poor typing. But when you're in a draft format where only certain Pokemon can terrestrialize, um, I'm whenever I'm bringing this thing, I'm going to want to terrestrialize it anyway. So. It's not really a weakness that I have to Terra it because I'm going to plan to. So overall, I think Greatest is going to put in a ton of work this season. I'm really, really excited for it. And the next pick is going to be Kells, our Enamorous. And if you guys don't know what Enamorous is, maybe you know what Tornadus, Thunderous, or Landorus is. Enamorous is basically the newest version of one of these legendary flying creatures, guys. And this one is a fairy type. And I thought this was really important to get a fairy type on the team. I think in general, a Dragon Steel and Fairy Core is really solid because it gives you resistances to a ton of of damage out there. They cover for each other really, really well, and I knew that no matter what, I wanted another ground immunity. I have one with the Vikavolt, but I wanted another one here with a flying type Pokemon, because as you can see, at this moment, we have three ground type weaknesses, especially that four times two, uh, the Iron Thorns. Obviously, we're going to Terra him, but still having a ground type immunity Another one here is really, really strong. This guy gets two abilities. One is the contrary ability, which is actually kind of weird. Every time you would get a stat gain, it's actually a stat drop. And every time you get a stat drop, it would be a stat gain. Uh, for most situations, that doesn't really do much for us because we're never going to like lower our stats to increase it. If somebody ever switches in with something like an Intimidate, it probably doesn't really matter much because we're more of a special attacker on this guy. However, what it can do is it can deter people from trying to remove our hazards with the move Defog. So the move Defog removes uh, hazards such as Stealth Rock spikes, all that kind of stuff. It also lowers the opposing Pokemon's evasion. Um, in this draft format, you can't normally boost your own evasion stats. However, with the ability Contrary, if somebody defogs you, your evasion goes up, and now all of a sudden you might just be randomly dodging a bunch of attacks, which can be really, really powerful. Um, this thing gets access to uh, multiple good special attacking fairy moves. It also gets access to the move Earth Power. And very similarly to how I've mentioned that Bolt Beam coverage is really, really good into um, many Pokemon with the electric and ice typing, Fairy in Ground does almost the exact same thing. So the only damage types that resist fairy are Steel, fire and poison well ground hits all three of those super effectively so even with just a fairy type and earth power move uh this thing can just go absolutely crazy and basically just blow through teams gets a really nice speed stat and 135 special attack stats so i think kells here the enamorous is just going to put in a ton of work this season this is one of our first two mons that doesn't have a pivot move that it can switch into something else unless you count the move healing wish so 
healing wish is essentially where uh, basically I'm going to sacrifice my enamorous and I can basically heal something else to full that switches in. So I don't know how much I'm actually going to use that. Probably not very often, but it is something in the bag that I can throw out there if I need. Next up to bat is going to be our next hero captain, Meeple the Vaporeon. And Meeple, I have noticed in my YouTube um, channel here, I think Umbreon is actually his like profile picture on the YouTube channel. Unfortunately for his sake, I did not get Umbreon, but I did get another evolution here with Vaporeon, another bulky um mon who honestly is just fantastic this thing still gets access to the move scald which a lot of pokemon don't get anymore scald is a really good uh, attacking water move because it has a chance to burn it gets access to the move flip turn which is another pivot option for my team so so far out of the eight pokemon i have six of them can basically pivot in and out which is really really nice great hp stat gets access to the move wish as well uh, which basically allows my either my Vaporeon or something that I switch in to get a huge heal back, which can just be really, really good support for the team. For the Terra uh, Captain, I put water. Obviously, I have to. I have to choose one of the same types, and I have to. And then I can do two of different types. Fairy is just really, really good um, in general as a Terra typing. You're going to notice that as a theme. I have three Terra Captains on this team, and all of them have Fairy as one of the options. And for the third one, I went with Poison. Now, I know that Poison is another ground weakness for my team. However, Poison is another incredibly good defensive typing. Um, and it is also something that resists grass, which is one of the only weaknesses that Vaporeon has naturally. This also gives me a grounded poison. So if I terrestrialize into poison and somebody puts toxic spikes up, I can basically swap in the Terra Poison Vaporeon and just soak them up. And now those toxic spikes don't do anything. Um, I think Meeple the Vaporeon is going to put in a ton of work. I honestly probably will bring this thing in most weeks uh, just because it's really, really flexible. And the one huge thing that I love about this Pokemon is its ability Water Absorb makes it so that it will not take any water damage. In fact, I even think it heals a little bit from taking that, which is really nice for our team because at this moment, Iron Treads um, and the Incineroar and the Iron Thorns are all weak to water. So having something that really deters the enemy from clicking a water move is really fantastic. The next Pokemon that I'm going to reveal is honestly one of them that I'm ins insanely excited to use. I have never really used this thing in Pokemon. Um, but I am pretty damn geeked about it. And because of a couple of the mons that we have on our team, I think it can be really effective for us. And that mon is going to be Guesswork, our Zoroark Hisuian. Before I get into this, uh, this guy named after our YouTube member Guesswork, I don't think there could possibly be a better name for this guy anyway. So Zoroark, his ability is Illusion. And essentially what that means is when Zoroark shows up on the field, he disguises himself as the Pokemon that you have in the back of your lineup. So if I have Dragapult listed sixth on my team and I switch in Zoroark, Zoroark will come in and he looks like Dragapult. The enemy cannot tell that it's not Dragapult. Now this is really great synergy with Dragapult because if somebody tries to click a super effective ghost type into the Dragapult, it will do literally no damage to our Zoroark because we have an insanely unique typing in Normal and Ghost, which gives us an immunity to Ghost, normal and fighting damage, which is really, really fantastic. It can also help us keep the Sherrod up a little bit because we do get some of the same moves as our Dragapult with Shadow Bolt and U-Turn. And honestly, the synergy does not stop there. Basically, this thing being immune to fighting is really great for us because our Iron Treads, our Incineroar, and our Iron Thorns are all weak to it. We have a lot of these synergies throughout where basically the weaknesses for the Zoroark are covered by the other Mons, and the things that the buttons that you want to click into my other Pokemon don't do anything to Zoroark. So I'm really, really excited to use this. Um, I know that this is one of the mons that I feel like is a little bit higher skill, skill cap to pilot, but I'm really excited to learn about it and to try and uh, utilize it to great effectiveness. So I really hope that guesswork can pop the hell off this season. And for our last Terra Captain of the roster, we have Krokorok. Now, this guy is only one point. He is not the fully evolved version Crocodile. And a lot of people are going to look at this and think he must not be that good. However, hear me out. This thing's stats are nothing insane, but it has a respectable speed stat and a respectable attack stat. It also gets access to two great abilities with Intimidate, the same ability that we have on Incineroar, and Moxie, the same ability that we have on our Quackaball. But here's the thing. Ground type with a decent attack gets access to Earthquake. 
if I choice scarf this thing with Moxie and click Terra Ground, um, a scarfed Terra Ground Crocorock is faster and hits harder than a choice scarfed Crocodile which a lot of people use as a choice scarf user to try and sweep teams with Moxie. So even though this thing is only one point, I'm probably not going to bring it super often, but I think that I can actually put in a decent amount of work with it. So Harkos, our Croc Rock, I'm hoping to put in a lot of work with. For the Terra uh, Captaincy, we've got Ground, obviously, as I said. I think being able to have a Moxie user Earthquake is just really, really strong. Fairy type is there to resist multiple of the damage types that are super effective into us. And we also have Terra Dragon. So the reason that we have Terra Dragon is this resists both grass and water, which hit us super effectively uh, normally. And it also gets access to the move Scale Shot. So if I don't want to run Choice Scarf, I can actually use the move Scale Shot, which increases our speed stat by one stage. Um, I can easily turn into a uh, Terra Dragon. Scale Shot is going to hit really damn hard. And honestly, I could be wrong on this thing, but one point feels like an absolute steal for this guy. I really feel like he should be at least like three. We'll find out. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I will be bringing this guy at some point this season. I can absolutely promise you that. And the last Pokemon on the roster is 100% the strongest Pokemon that has ever existed. I'm incredibly excited to have it on the roster, and it is none other than Chisei, the Bulbasaur. Honestly, uh... This guy, in terms of actual strength, not going to be of much use if I had to guess. It does give me a grounded poison, and it does give me a grass type. Two types that, at this moment, I don't have on the team. So technically, he is immune to things like spore and powder moves. He is also uh, able to switch in and soak up toxic spikes for me if I want. Realistically, I want to bring this guy at least once this season. I don't know which week that is going to be, but I put this guy on the team because Bulbasaur is literally my favorite Pokemon of all time and i had one point remaining and i said screw it let's do it let's put him on the team and very fittingly uh chise is just an absolute person who i adore uh so chise i hope you're okay with basically being the pokemon that is probably the weakest on my team but he's also my favorite so uh hats off to you for for being my Bulbasaur. if i do want to use this thing i actually can do some tricky things with it it also gets access to the ability chlorophyll so if any reason i set up manual sun for my team this thing actually could outspeed quite a few things if I try and go that route. But overall, guys, that is the team. That's the Oregon Golducks for IBL Season 10. I'm incredibly excited to get into this. Um, from my very limited experience in Draft League, I have absolutely loved it. Um, it's been an absolute blast. I love the fact that you can do a ton of theory crafting. I love the fact that I have control over the actual battle. Um, it's just an absolute ton of fun for me. I've been really, really enjoying uh, my current uh, team that I'm doing in the PUDL. I'm hoping to make it far in the playoffs. We'll see how that goes. But for everybody watching and supporting the channel, just know that I really, really appreciate it. And in the description down below, I'm going to list all of the other uh, members of this league. This is a upload mandatory league. So basically every single player in this league is going to upload basically every single week. So if you guys enjoy this content and enjoy my team and maybe want to check out some of the other teams in the league, I really, really highly encourage that. There's a lot of awesome people in this league who uh, I think you guys would really enjoy. So with that being said, though, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm hoping that the Oregon Golducks can put in some work this season, make it to the playoffs and maybe make a run. But we've got a lot of work ahead of us, guys. So let me know what you think of the team down below in the comments. And until then, have a wonderful day.